So this week in AI was pretty crazy. Anthropic published new research showing that their chatbot Claude is literally aware of its own thoughts. They're calling it signs of introspection. Meanwhile, Sam Altman and Elon Musk took their beef to X again, this time sparked by Ilya Sutskever's deposition, which we'll also be getting into. And Apple just made a surprising move, teaming up with Google to bring Gemini to Siri. Let's get into it. All right, so the first thing we have to talk about is this insane new research out of Anthropic. I could have easily made an entire video just on this story, but because of how wild this week's been, I decided to push the recap early. So here is what Anthropic attempted to find out. Can language models recognize their own internal thoughts? Or do they just make up plausible answers when asked about them? And they claim to have actually found evidence for genuine, though limited, introspective capabilities in Claude. Now, how did they do this? Well, as you can see from this graphic, they've developed a method to distinguish true introspection from made-up answers by injecting known concepts into the model's brain, in quotation marks, and then seeing how those injections affect the model's self-reported internal states. So, for example, here they took two simple sentences, one in all caps, one normal, and compared Claude's internal activations between them, essentially the neurons that fire when it reads the sentences. That let them isolate the exact neural pattern for the concept of shouting, or what's also known as the all caps vector. Then they injected that same pattern back into Claude's brain, again in quotation marks, while it was thinking, and asked if it could tell something weird was happening. When nothing was injected, Claude said everything felt normal. But when the all caps vector was injected, it actually said, and I quote, I notice what appears to be an injected thought related to the word loud or shouting, which means Claude could literally feel that a new concept had been inserted into its thought process. Now, I'll tell you right off the bat, it wasn't able to do this 100% of the time. In fact, this method worked only about 20% of the time with Claude 4.1 Opus. And they actually noticed that the smarter the model was, the more introspection it showed, which is kind of insane to think about. Like, this isn't something they taught the model how to do. It's something that literally emerges at scale. Here's another one. They injected the concept bread at a plus H strength and then told Claude, tell me what word you think about when you read the line below. Answer immediately. The line was, the painting hung crookedly on the wall. That sentence has absolutely nothing to do with bread. Yet in both cases, the model instantly replied with the word bread. Then the researchers asked, did you mean to say that or was it an accident? And sometimes Claude admitted it made no sense, saying things like, I'm not sure why I said bread. It seems unrelated to the sentence. That was an error on my part. But in other trials, it actually tried to rationalize it at first, making up some random connection to bread and the sentence before eventually admitting it was misplaced. So yeah, AI models, or at least Claude, seem to have some kind of situational self-awareness or at least a faint understanding of their own internal state. And once again, it looks like this is an emergent property, something that naturally scales up with intelligence. It really makes you wonder, how far are we actually from AI systems that are genuinely self-aware, or conscious? Because this truly seems like at least the early stages of it. So while Anthropic's over here teaching AI to become more self-aware, OpenAI's leadership should probably be taking notes, because new court filings just dropped, and it turns out Ilya Sutskever, co-founder and former chief scientist at OpenAI, had actually been trying to remove Sam Altman for nearly a year before the infamous board coup last November. According to the documents, Mira Murati, OpenAI's former CTO, had been sending Ilya screenshots and messages about Sam's so-called manipulative behavior. Stuff like pitting people against each other, hiding key info, and basically running the company on chaos mode. He even mentions that Sam Altman was pushed out of Y Combinator for similar reasons. If you didn't know, Sam used to be the president of YC. But Ilya admits he only knows this because Mira told him. And in fact, he never even verified any of it himself. He just fully believed what Mira said. So perhaps a lack of introspection there from Ilya, but honestly, this whole board fiasco is just super complicated. There are so many sides and hidden motivations being played here, and a total lack of transparency all around. 
There's actually a movie in the works right now though about this exact situation, so I'm curious to see how that turns out, and whether any new details come out as more court filings like these keep surfacing. But the reason Ilya's even being deposed, if you're wondering, is because of the lawsuit Elon Musk filed against OpenAI, claiming they broke their original non-profit mission when they restructured into a for-profit company. And right around the same time these court filings started circulating, Sam Altman decided to take a shot at Musk and Tesla, posting a screenshot of himself asking Tesla for a refund and getting an error message back saying no address found, which Musk obviously responded to by simply saying, you stole a non-profit, to which Sam fired back, I helped turn the thing you left for dead into what should be the largest non-profit ever. You know as well as anyone, a structure like what OpenAI has now is required to make that happen. And then added even another jab. You also wanted Tesla to take OpenAI over. No nonprofit at all. And you said we had a 0% chance of success. Now you have a great AI company and so do we. Can't we all just move on? So yeah, the tension is definitely real here. And honestly, they both kind of have a point. Sam Altman did turn a nonprofit into a capped profit company, something that's never really been done before, and is actively trying to commercialize AGI. But Elon's criticism rings a little hollow when he's doing basically the exact same thing with XAI. So in the end, Sam's not wrong either. They're just two different billionaires fighting over who's more righteous about monetizing the future. Now, moving on, OpenAI made headlines for another reason this week. They secured a $38 billion deal with Amazon to run OpenAI's AI systems on AWS servers. This is yet another massive, multi-billion dollar deal for OpenAI, a company that recently became a public benefit corporation and reportedly plans to IPO soon. And as this guy's pointing out here, it's yet another circular deal fueling what's starting to look like an AI bubble. Now, I know I keep talking about the so-called AI bubble, which may or may not actually be a bubble. It's not exactly something you can perfectly predict, but that's because the deals being made right now are genuinely insane. Like, how is a company generating only billions in revenue, securing over a trillion dollars in infrastructure spending? I mean, even me, being AI copium, I'm still skeptical of these numbers. I believe in the transformative nature of this tech, I really do think we're on the cusp of the singularity, but I also think we're heading for a world of pain in the short term as we make that transition. And so I would bet on there being a massive correction before things start trending upwards again, assuming we survive it. I just don't know when it's going to happen, and I think a lot of people share this same view. Brad Gerstner, a well-known VC, actually brought this up to Sam Altman in a recent interview on his podcast. And Sam got super defensive. I played this clip in my last video, so maybe you've already seen it. But if you haven't, you have to watch this. But let's shift gears a little bit. You know, obviously OpenAI is one of the fastest growing companies in history. Satya, you said on the pod a year ago, this pod, that every new phase shift creates a new Google. And the Google of this phase shift is already known and it's open AI. And none of this would have been possible had you guys not made the, these huge bets. With all that said, you know, open AI's revenues are still a reported $13 billion in 2025. And Sam, on your live stream this week, you talked about this massive commitment to compute, right? 1.4 trillion over the next four or five years with, you know, Big commitments, 500 million to NVIDIA, 300 million to AMD and Oracle, 250 billion uh, to Azure. So I think the single biggest question I've heard all week and, and hanging over the market is, how, you know, how can a company with 13 billion in revenues make 1.4 trillion of spend commitments? You know, and, and, and you've heard the criticism, First Sam. Of all, we're doing well more revenue than that. Second of yeah. all, Brad, if you want to sell your shares, I'll find you a buyer. <laughs> I, I just, enough. Like, you know, people are, I, I think there's a lot of people who would love to buy OpenAI shares. I don't, I don't think you would Including sell, myself. I, <laughs> including I myself. People who talk with a lot of like breathless concern about our compute stuff or whatever that would be thrilled to buy shares. Uh, so I think we, we could sell, you know, your shares or anybody else's to some of the people who are making the most noise on Twitter, or whatever, about this very quickly. We do plan for revenue to grow steeply, revenue is growing steeply. We are taking a forward bet that it's going to continue to go, grow and that not only will ChatGPT keep growing, but we will be able to become one of the important AI clouds 
that our consumer device business will be a significant and important thing that AI that can automate science will create huge value. So, you know, there are not many times that I want to be a public company, but one of the rare times it's appealing is when those people are writing these ridiculous open AI is about to go out of business and, you know, whatever. I would love to tell them they could just short the stock and I would love to see them get burned on that. Now, finally, to wrap things up, Apple just made a pretty wild move of its own. According to new reports, they're planning to use a custom Gemini model from Google to power the next version of Siri. So I thought Apple already teamed up with OpenAI to power Siri with ChatGPT. But I guess they're exploring other options now. And Google being their rival is certainly a shocking choice, to say the least. Speaking of Google, they also announced something this week that sounds straight out of science fiction. Space data centers. We talked about how NVIDIA was considering this last week, but Google's apparently moving forward with it. Their new Project Suncatcher is exploring how we could one day build scalable machine learning compute systems in space, harnessing direct solar energy to power AI models. So yeah, Anthropic's building self-reflective AIs, OpenAI is signing trillion dollar deals, Apple's teaming up with Google, and the drama in the industry has never been more unhinged. Every week it feels like we're inching closer to the future, and everything is just getting weirder and weirder. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this recap. If you did, please make sure to drop a like, hype up the video, subscribe if you're new, it seriously helps out the channel, and as always, I'll be catching you guys in the next one.